nutshell, what we're trying to do in the African Storybook is to say, uh, how can we ensure that there are many wonderful stories for parents to read to children, for children to read in libraries, for librarians to read to children, to teachers to work with children, and how can we make sure that there are enough of those in local languages. The African Storybook Project is about promoting literacy uh, for African children. But dominantly in the mother tongue, and the best way that kids can learn a language, become literate, is through the mother tongue. It's mainly about access, because access is on, not only going to be confined into a classroom, it's also going to be at home, they can access the stories from home. So even if they are not being taught at school the, their home languages, they can access them from home through you know, our website and learning in their own pace at their own time the stories that they've heard from their parents or from their great-grandparents. The challenge is availability of materials to promote reading uh, in schools in the local languages. So this project, the African Storybook Project, will greatly help to address that challenge. So if one can provide a way in which our authors can, can take a story that's in one language, uh, translate it, version it into another context and another language, you immediately are creating a large number of stories for kids that they can identify with. From one story, you seed, potentially, in three pilot countries, another 12 in South Africa, another 50 in Uganda, another 60 in Kenya. The way that the storybook project began really was when Dorcas Wepakulu from Turkana, Kenya, came to Boston and began to really push me on how we were going to get materials for her students who had nothing to read. The complaint everywhere I've ever worked is, how could I teach children to read when they have nothing to read? If you go into an African bookshop in most African countries, you won't find any children's books in the local languages at all. So at one point, uh, two years ago, I had $1,000 in my pocket. And I went to the major bookstore in Durban. And I said to the man who owns the bookstore, here's $1,000, I want $1,000 worth of books in Zulu. Now, Isi Zulu is the biggest African language in South Africa. So we searched, and I couldn't spend the $1,000. Those books were not there. So you say, well, I, I can't buy the books. So what am I going to do? We'll have to create the books. When we saw ch teachers or people reading books to children in English, the children sit very nicely, and they smile. And when they think they're supposed to laugh, they laugh. They're very polite. But when we read those books to the children, with the children, and he says, Zulu, they jumped around and they cried when something bad happened, and they laughed when something funny happened. There's no comparison. They understood the story. And now we have people in Kenya, Uganda, Lesotho, South Africa working on it, and many other partners who we hope will join us. There's a big portion of Kenya that is, uh, has poor infrastructure. And with technology, I think we can reach no more children than if we were to be bringing in hard copies. So we are hoping that we'll reach more children who will be able to access stories and be able to be motivated to read and to aim to reach higher than any other. We are experimenting with a very small data projector that has a two-hour life, battery life, and you can charge that data projector, link it to your cell phone, take it into the classroom, and hey presto, you've got a big book on your wall for the children to read. Sadie has been going for 21 years. Since the beginning, our mission was about uh, increasing access, meaningful access, to quality education for people in the pursuit of social justice. We use different education methodologies as well as different technologies in order to do that. When Judith came to us and sort of said, uh, will you take this on, we grabbed it with um, <laughs> open arms and this was a project whereby we could in fact work with a number of partners, uh, a range of, of organisations that are working in the area of children's literacy and saying often there's something that's um, preventing you from doing as well as you might and we can help to plug that particular gap. And in each country, we have a range of different partners. So, for example, in South Africa, 
One of our partners is Poco Books. Um, another is, of course, in South Africa, the Nali Bali reading campaign. In other countries, we are working with major national initiatives, like, for example, in Uganda with the RTI Sharp project, which is a project that is working with the government in Uganda to produce materials as well as teacher training for the teaching of early reading in 12 of the indigenous African languages in Uganda. And then, of course, there are international NGOs like Code, the Canadian Reading Development Organization. They've got offices and initiatives in many different African countries, including Ghana, Mali, Ethiopia, very strong, and other countries like Mozambique. In due course, we will be working with them to see how they can use our website and its stories and version our stories into the languages in their countries. What we're looking at here is collaborative research, and we're working with partners in, in, in a meaningful way. Because as researchers, we want to be sure that our research is meaningful, uh, that it can affect uh, a difference. Some of the advantages of working with researchers is that because we work across multiple sites, we can bring some of the insights from our research in other areas to bear on a particular project. We need to work um, with policymakers, we need to work with practitioners, and we need to work with scholars. The partners uh, in this project, apart from SADI, of course, which is the prime um, mover and shaker, is the Peter Wall Institute for Advanced Studies. They have sponsored, been primary sponsors of this particular colloquium, which, is a, uh, which aims to develop a collaborative research framework around the African Storybook Project. Um, STIAS, the Stellenbosch Institute for Advanced Studies, has also been very generous in hosting this and supporting us. And uh, the National Research Foundation of South Africa has also contributed uh, in other ways. The project has four strategies that it's using in order to meet the desperate need for stories for young readers in their own languages. Developing a website where people can find the stories, create, adapt, share and use the stories, downloading them on different devices or printing them as they require. The second element is that the stories must be openly licensed. The third element of the project is the partners. And then the fourth element of the project is, of course, the pilot countries. And I think that um, Juliet and Dorcas and Lorato have spoken about our pilot countries in South Africa, in Uganda, and in Kenya, as well as, of course, in Lesotho. When our website is up and running um, early in 2014, anybody is free to go and see what we have to offer, but we would like to encourage them not only to just look, but also to create stories on the website, to choose a story, to translate into another language, um, or to adapt um, for their particular context and interest. If you've got a lot of stories and you are in a community that develops stories, we'd love to set up a relationship with you whereby you share those stories with us and we give you feedback on those stories and we can offer you the opportunity of getting those stories published through the website. If you would like to conduct some research on the ways in which the website and its stories are being used, we love you to tell us what you want to do and keep in touch with us um, about what you find. Sadie, is, is, a, is a quite a remarkable institution in that it has reached out um, to Africa in, in very innovative ways. And to partner with an organization like SADI is, is a privilege. And, um, and, and I think together with, with, with researchers and practitioners, uh, we can, we, the, the hope is to, to make a real difference uh, to educational practice. We, we start off in South Africa, Uganda and Kenya as pilot sites, but then the hope is that what we learn from those pilot sites we'll be able to utilise in other contexts in Africa. So um, we have great hopes for the future. Mm -hmm.